Hi, everybody. This is Joanne Eisen with Reach the Unlimited, and we are here for another edition. And I want to thank everybody for being here. Thank you for sharing in this time with us. And I would like to welcome my guest, Imani, today, who is going to be speaking to us about really it's mindful mind, mindset. Sorry, I know how to speak mindset empowerment and we're going to go into autoimmune as well so we've got a lot of things to talk about and the thing that we want to talk about most are cats so we've already had a great conversation about that we'll see if that pops in here as well both kitty lovers so thank you so much for taking your time and being with us today i appreciate it i know <laughs> oh, thank you so much first of all joanne for having me you know and giving me this opportunity to share your platform with you and to be just another voice in sharing my story and hope that it resonates with someone that really needs to hear it and that can know that they still got it going on. They still have that unique special sauce and they still can bring to light anything they desire. Thank you. That is the whole go goal of this platform is to really do that, to give people different ways to think and different ways to see things. So I love having so many different people on that share their experiences because we all experience life differently. And I know that you had a story we started talking about. I was like, wait, wait, we got to hold on. You have an experience that brought you to having this mindset, right? That there's more to life or that you can achieve more. Can you share with everybody a little about yourself and your journey? Sure. Hello, everyone. I am Amani. I am gloriously 41 years old. Yes, please hold the applause. It's okay. Um <laughs> And I live in Macon, Georgia. So it's like summer already here. And mm -hmm. what really is really pivotal for me um, to make it kind of ironic about my story is it ended me up in the medical field. So me and Joanne was talking about my wonderful voice. And that's the reason why I went into the medical field because I have the soothing voice. I know how to calm patients down, but never did I imagine that me being a patient myself first was gonna be part of the trajectory of me getting into the medical field. So it was about in 2002, I was 22 years old, living the best life I thought in college, you know, doing my own thing, free, acting a straight fool. I have no problem admitting that I was just gone in my 20s. And I was just taking a drive on a sunny April day, 2.40 in the afternoon. I'm at a stoplight at a major intersection. And at that time I was living in Colorado and I was just riding with a friend and you never know what you're gonna look at when you check your rear view mirror. And that one time I went and checked my rear view mirror, I saw this car coming straight for me. I had nowhere to go. I had two lanes of traffic on my right and I had a whole concrete barrier on my left. Oh I was my. stuck. And before I could even tell my passenger, we're about to be in an accident, the car mm -hmm. slammed straight into my back end. Mm -hmm. And from the traffic detail, they said they had to have hit me at a minimum of 50 miles an hour by the tread marks of them mm -hmm. trying to skid. And that caused my car to crash into the car in front of me and that car crashed into the car in front of it. But my car took the damage and it just folded like an accordion on itself. Wow. And I was just sitting there, not, oh my gosh, I'm in an accident as blood is dripping out my nose and I'm trying to hold it in my hand. Don't know why I was doing that. But the first thing, Joanne, I'm saying is my mother is going to kill me. Oh my God, is she here already? Forget the pain, where is she? <laughs> What's going down? This is it. And all I could sit there is just so numb of like, this couldn't have happened. And the passenger in the car that hit me he went through, didn't feel the pain. He, Joanne, was the one that first came to my window. It's like, he's like, dude, are you okay? I found out later he was in the car behind me. Wow. And so they had to roll my window down and mm -hmm. take me through my window because my door could not open. And they took me to the hospital. And this was what was so pivotal. This is what I like to say was a wrecking moment in my life. They told me after they did all the scans, all the blood work, finally took me off the, you know, the cart and took the wind, you know, the, the thing off. They were like, well, Miss Harris, 
we really wish you would have broke something. And I'm just like, are you serious right now? <laughs> Why would you wish that on someone? And there's like, Joanne, they were like, Miss Harris, we want to explain. They said with the break, we can take an x-ray, we can see it. We can take you into surgery, we can fix it. Then in your healing process, we can take another x-ray and see the healing process. Mm -hmm. They said, but all of your injuries are soft tissue injury. Mm. And they said, to this day, we still don't understand how the body responds to soft tissue injury. Mm -hmm. So they just told me, start seeing over time, diagnosis after Mm -hmm. diagnosis popping up. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, well, that doesn't sound promising either, you know, because I had almost broke my nose. I had severe whiplash. I went straight into the steering wheel and bounced back, sprained mm-hmm. my whole chest wall cavity, tore collagen in both my knees, but didn't break anything. But that's what started my journey of autoimmunity, because autoimmune starts from a trauma of mm-hmm. some sort to your body. Mm-hmm. And it's so much that your body doesn't want to deal with it anymore. So it attacks itself. That's what my journey started with to where I now live with eight (laughs) autoimmune conditions on a daily basis. And Mm -hmm. it impacts everything I do, Mm -hmm. how I function, how I can even take something as simple as a shower is a a laborious act for me. Cleaning one room takes days, you know, for me, you know, and it's just such a process Mm -hmm. of how your mindset gets wrecked. And the reason why I say that is usually it takes 10 to 12 years to even get your first diagnosis. So you're going through the pitfalls of going to doctor, to doctor, to doctor, saying, I don't know what's wrong with you. We can't find anything. It's all in your head. Nothing's wrong with you. Get over it. You look fine. We don't see anything physically happening to you until you finally sometimes just get so fed up, you almost give up. Mm-hmm. And for many, you do, we do. We give up. Mm-hmm. Or think but you're then, crazy. Exactly. But then my thing is, well, if it's mental, don't we fix that too? Mm -hmm. When they act like, no, we can't fix that. Okay. But even afterward, Joanne, Mm -hmm. is even harder because they give you the diagnosis. Now you have to live with this part. There's Mm -hmm. no cure for you. There's nothing we can do for you. You just have to live with it. Okay. But you have to completely change how you lived your life before the diagnosis to after the diagnosis. But there's no journey and assistance along the way to Mm -hmm. show you this is how you can manage it. This is how you can live within those limitations they present. This is what you need to be mindful of. There was no guidelines or roadmap for me this whole time since 2002. Mm -hmm. I've been winging it. And I got to a place, Joanne, that I was like, you know what? What reason is there to live? They already told me there's no cure. Mm -hmm. I've already had multiple. I'm about to probably get some more, you know, have these other things happening as well. I can't even stand myself because my body can't stand me. So Mm -hmm. I'm just going to play the victim, stay the victim and reject anything and everybody because they don't understand. Mm -hmm. So you stay even further isolated because there's such a stigma and a misconception of what autoimmunity truly is. Mm-hmm. And even in the medical field is the truth. Half yeah. of, the, of the community believes in it. They just don't mm-hmm. know what to do with it. The mm-hmm. other half don't believe in it at all. They think it's just a blanket label they throw on you when they can't find anything else. Mm-hmm. So you even have discord within the community that should be helping you. Yeah. But they're not. Mm-hmm. So I was really negative. (laughs) Even though I was on the process of being positive, I was still negative. I was still so negative and frustrated with what I couldn't do and why people didn't want to be around me and didn't want to do things with me. And they treated me like I was glass or broken or could break at any moment. And so I was just on autopilot. I was basically surviving moment by moment by moment. I want people to really think about that because what you're saying is very common. You're not unusual in the way that when you get like we all get into kind of mindsets like that often in our own different way and yet we can all have the same reaction that you're having feeling isolated feeling crazy feeling like i'm never going to get out of this or you know how do i find the answer to this so what did you do to kind of help and change that mindset or to be able to see something in a different way a lot of it i have to attribute to my faith 
Mm. Through all of it, I knew who God was, but I didn't have a relationship with him yet. Mm -hmm. But once I got on the journey of having a relationship with him, Mm -hmm. man, the correction, I'm going to call it, it it comes steady if you're willing to receive it. Mm -hmm. Because he's a loving God. He wants the best for you because he designed you for the best. Mm -hmm. And so he basically had to have a come to Jesus moment with me last year, Joanne, when I turned 40. He's like, you know, um, you're still not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And I'm like, excuse me? (laughs) I'm in the medical field, which is irony because the medical field can't help me, but I'm working in it. (laughs) I'm living somewhere that is so hot. I can't stand it. I can't Mm -hmm. tolerate it because I don't sweat. So there's that irony. All of this going on. I'm serving. I'm doing all these things. What do you mean I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing? And he says, daughter, what I mean is you've made everything more important and bigger than me, including your health issues. So I can't move on your behalf because you've limited me by making them more important and bigger than what I can really reach. You have to lay all those things down and Mm -hmm. get out of my way. Mm -hmm. Joanne, that wasn't it. So then I was like, okay, so here comes step two. This is the more important one. Okay. Every time you talk negative about yourself, every time you joke about yourself, every time you say you can't stand the way you look, you don't love the fat rolls or whatever the issue is that we just self democratize ourselves. He's like, you are rejecting me and I created you. You're basically trying to prove to everyone with your words that I'm a liar for placing you on this earth. And I don't lie and I don't make mistakes. I know you've been told all your life that you was a mistake. You wasn't planned. You wasn't meant to be here. But not going through all this stuff for kicks and giggles. You're not going through all this stuff because I just want to show and prove anything. He's like, you're going through what you're going through so you can be of a blessing to someone else and show them the greatness Mm -hmm. of God Mm -hmm. to be glorified. And the fact that he uses you. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and I love how you say that because I feel like it's a lot of times just a projection of our own idea. It's not reality. And I was just slapped in the face with something that I always thought when I was a kid, I always thought I did terrible in school. I was stupid. I mean, you know, we all have those kinds of moments. And yet my mom just gave me some report cards where I made the honor roll. And I've got A's, and and for somehow in my own mind, I conjured up that I didn't do that well. Like I was a failure in school. It, it it shows how we can take something based on our own idea or our belief that we're less than, and create something worse than what it actually is. And I love that you said that about loving yourself, no matter who we are, because we were created perfect, and we make ourselves not perfect by our own beliefs. Absolutely. And, you know, just like how you were dealing with it, that's what I was doing with my mom. Mm -hmm. I was dealing with that spirit of rejection since birth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was in a constant mode of trying to prove my worth for her having me. Mm -hmm. But even with that, it still wasn't enough. Nothing I did was enough. I got the straight A's. I tested five grades above everyone in standardized tests, but that still wasn't enough. And so I carried that all the way into adulthood, mm-hmm. all the way into my 40s. Mm-hmm. And so God's like, no, fam, time out. Mm-mm. That's mm-hmm. not how that works. You could at any time given all of that to me mm-hmm. and we could be taking care of it. But this is the beauty in that. It's never too late to finally recognize that. Exactly. That's the beauty. (laughs) And also, though, I feel like not only recognizing it in what may be the truth, but what is your truth, right? I mean, I I was just talking to somebody earlier today about how we tend to create our own story that's not really the true story and how we, we think we're certain ways or things happen to us because of certain things where it's all just a story when if you go back to look at it from a different perspective or from a different point of view, you see it really wasn't what you thought it was. We create this harm or disharmony within ourselves based on our own, like what you were saying, we're not really honoring the bodies that we were given, the circumstances that we're in, the um, 
whatever it is. I mean, our family history, the, our relationships, there's so many things that we can use to devalue ourselves, where if we were to just realize that we were created perfectly and trust that, or what's happening in our life is perfectly designed for whatever we're here to learn and trust that. But we don't seem to have that trust, I think. Yeah. And I think what's also important to Joanne, you have to have the right people around you. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I have a really great spiritual family that I'm a part of mm -hmm. that they aren't going to just let me go flying by the wayside. Mm -hmm. They're going to hold me accountable with my growth in love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're focused on me really truly living in the abundance mm -hmm. and greatness that God already has in store for me. Mm -hmm. But I have to be open and willing to receive it. And a lot of times that's our disconnect is like we believe it, but we don't right. believe it. You know, exactly. just like the father said with his son, he's like, yeah, God, mm -hmm. you know, Jesus, help me if you're willing, but help me with my unbelief. I believe, but mm -hmm. help me with my unbelief. That's the doubt. Because yes. we're so reactionary. Something mm -hmm. happens, we're ready to go sideways, and we're already coming up with the defense and all this. Instead of saying, wait, let me pause, stop, and reflect. Is this even about me? No. It's actually the environment that surrounds me exactly. or something that I say that incites <laughs> something in that person mm -hmm. that they're not ready to do. Then it causes them to get uncomfortable, and now mm -hmm. they lash out at us. When well, we it's... take our stuff at the perspective, yeah. it helps. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You can go ahead. I'm sorry. I oh, mean, no problem. <laughs> but a lot of it I've had to learn, Joanne, is to take mm -hmm. myself out the equation. Because mm -hmm. when you're dealing with rejection, you automatically mm -hmm. start rejecting first because you're like, well, it's about to happen. So right. let me get you before you get me. Ha! How about that? But now right. you're still even further isolated because right. you're not giving anyone the chance to come in. Right to love you to your greater, mm -hmm. to show you there's better for you. That's also key about the right community. They're also going to pray for you in love, even when if they may not the bullet point, bullet point expectation of what's going on with you, but because they love you enough, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they want to see you flourish. They want to see you prosper. They are going to pray for you. And I can say so many people prayed for me along their journey to get me to where I am. Mm -hmm. Because people are positioned in our lives keenly for seasons and reasons to draw out the greatness in us that we don't yet recognize or even realize. And they get us to that point of actualization. But we have to be discerning of why right. they're there. That's a big one. Uh, I feel like sometimes we get in our own way, even in that way, right? We're, we're not discerning enough either by not allowing the people that really can help us in or letting people that are not really helping us in. You know, I mean, we can go both ways on that one, depending on where we're at mentally. How did you, um, how did you come to being able to trust who you would let in? It's day, I can say it is a daily process. Mm -hmm. There is no time you get arrived because mm -hmm. your mind and your soul are always at war with each other all mm -hmm. the time. It is. is who are you going to listen to? Mm -hmm. I think so often we try to run away from the inner critic. Mm -hmm. So it just causes the inner critic to get louder because it wants attention. It's mm -hmm. sitting there like, hey, you can't ignore me as much as you think you can. You can run, but you're not going high. Hold up. Got you again. You know, but I've recognized that if we take that moment to pause, stop and reflect, and speak to our inner critic, which is really our inner child of before the trauma started happening, mm -hmm. to say, hey girl, I see you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for looking out for me. Thank you for wanting to have my best intentions at mind. But you know what? God has it from here. Mm -hmm. You've done your part. Mm -hmm. When you face it and acknowledge it, that gives you more power and more confidence and resilience to keep going through whatever you are enduring. And then it also reminds you this, Joanne, you have won 100% of the battles you have faced because you're still here. You're still breathing. Mm -hmm. You're still standing. You're still smiling. You're still putting one foot in front of the other to keep momentum going of whatever the vision and purpose is God has placed in you. Mm -hmm. 
And that's really important and it's something that we can often forget that every day we have an opportunity to relive our life in a different way or to make different choices or to act on things that we may have not felt comfortable doing. I mean, I feel like that's what we're here for is to constantly be challenging ourselves to be in that life that we want to live here, in that truth of what we're here to do. Absolutely. And be okay with the process. Mm -hmm. We have to learn to trust the process and be okay with the moments when we're not okay. It's okay to be that. Mm -hmm. Take all of those different masks that you feel you have to wear to mm -hmm. show everyone that everything's fine. They need to know you're relevant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they know, exactly. need to know you're a person too, because then that's going to put their guard down. They're going to start mm -hmm. bringing their walls down because they're going to see, wait a minute, she is real human. You know, she has good days and bad days. So if she's able to still do all of these things, I first want to know how she's doing it. And two, she she or he is inspiring me to keep going in my process. Right. Because we so often compare ourselves to other people mm -hmm. and now yeah. we feel inadequate. And I had to learn that the hard yeah. way. Right. I live with autoimmunity. There's a lot of limitations with that. Does mm -hmm. that mean I can do something exactly as someone else? Not really, but I can do it within those limitations and still get accomplished. I just may have to take a little bit longer. For example, I built something. The box says it takes 30 minutes. It took me seven days. And I, I actually took a picture of every process, opened the box up. Oh, there's that energy. Take everything out the box. Oh, that day's done. And slow procession. But the thing is, I still got it done. So we have to stop discounting the small mm -hmm. beginnings and the small wins because they amplify to the bigger one. But we're so focused on the big one, we completely yeah. negate the journey. <sighs> Absolutely. And like you said, we focus, you know, in the our focus often is in the wrong area. How do you work with people or talk with people about Okay, because I I I I know that sometimes we can feel crazy in our own mind, right? Let alone having other people can be like, "Oh, come on, you 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 got to get over this. You're just making this up." How did you get through that stigma, or or work with people that were around you to even understand this is real? This is something that I'm going through, and being able to stand in your own truth and stand the ground to I have to live my process because it's my process. Well, a lot of it, Joanne, is remind, being reminded constantly that this journey is not for me anyway. Mm -hmm. This journey is to show someone else that they can get their breakthrough, too, mm -hmm. because I received mine and that it's going to be a continual process. None of us is ever going to be arrived, but that still means we can thrive. None of us was meant to survive and just go on autopilot and just go through the motions and just wing it. No, God still wants us to have peace. He still wants to have abundance. He still wants us to have joy. He still wants us to have comfort. He wants us to have all of those things. An affliction, a dis-ease does not define who you are. Mm -hmm. There is no time, I like to say in the Bible, that he told any of the people he used, okay, hold on, I'm going to need you to get rid of this, 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 and this, then I'll use you. He used them right where they are. He loved them from where they were to their greater. So we have to do the same thing with ourselves. Love ourselves where we are and be fully present while still being great expectation for mm -hmm. what is to come. My spiritual mentor, teacher Melvin Walker, she's the one that instilled that into me. You have to truly believe in the great abundance and great expectation that God has for you. That's the living hope that keeps you going every single day because there's always going to be something happening. There's always going to be a distraction, a hindrance, an mm -hmm. obstacle, an offense. But does that have to negate the whole rest of your journey? No. It is simply a paragraph in one chapter in the whole book of your life. There's still more to be written. I have to ask this because what you just said was really important. Can you please repeat that for people? Because that is, because we think that we're living our whole life at every moment and that's not really the truth. Yeah, it's basically what you're going through right now. Mm -hmm. First of all, remember this, it's temporary. Mm -hmm. We think it's permanent, there's an end stamp, that's the end. No, it's temporary. It is simply a paragraph mm -hmm. in one chapter mm -hmm. in the whole book of your life. 
there is still so yeah. much more to be written and manifested, but it's ultimately our choice on how the rest is gonna get written. I wanna just I put this on loop. <laughs> Just keep putting it on loop because that is so important. And, and Karen, I love how you had mentioned about um, beginnings, right? It's better to begin than not to begin because if you don't begin, you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to go anywhere. You're going to stay in that process that you're in. So I love that you're saying that it's just one part of a whole story. We can't claim that as our whole life. And, our, and I know a lot of times when you tend to get into situations where you're feeling like, you're never going to get forward. You're never going to get ahead. You're never going to go anywhere. I mean, we can get into that mindset very easily. And if we can look at the overall bigger picture and see that this is just one of a bigger picture, I think it would help us. Absolutely. And, and also, too, we have to think about every time we enter a new level, mm -hmm. those lessons are going to be repeated. Mm -hmm. So often people get frustrated, like, well, I, I, I can't get past this. Why does this keep happening to me? Well, are you focusing on what your reaction time is? Mm -hmm. Because we have to go through the lessons at every level to mm -hmm. see, have we learned the lesson from the last level? But mm -hmm. the key is, what is your response time? Maybe mm -hmm. the first time it took you a decade to get over it. The lesson comes back around, it takes you mm -hmm. 10 months. The next time the lesson comes around, it takes you 10 days. The next time the lesson comes, 10 minutes. Then the next one, see you. Okay. <laughs> you, you don't even give it time. You have to give a response. You're like, I see it. <laughs> nope, not today. Not doing it. That's what God is focusing on mm -hmm. is every time he's giving the enemy permission to sift us like wheat, to test our faith in him. He's saying, ha -ha, see, see, she got it again. Oh, oh, she got it faster. Look at him. <laughs> you thought he got him this time. Eh. God is doing a happy dance. Every <laughs> time our reaction time gets smaller, like, okay, carry on. But we're looking at it as, oh, we're being punished. We did something wrong. It's mm -hmm. karma. Yes, we make bad decisions. Mm -hmm. We have to honor that truth. But do we have to stay stuck in the fact that we've made a bad? No, let's now move on. How do we find the solution in the greatness of that lesson to help us be better the next time the lesson comes around. That's a really, really important statement. And I love because even Marilyn was saying she's been living with an injury for 30 years, which I know she has been. And sometimes we can think, well, what did I do wrong? Or what am I not doing right? Or, you know, there's so many ways we can go into a circle. How do you tell people about, like in your experience, right, and what you're going through, this wasn't something that you did even by lifestyle choices, right? This is something that happened to you. And now you're dealing with the ramifications of it, which it happens a lot. But either way, there are people that have these kinds of ailments or issues, right? How do you, what are tools or what are ways that you could help people to understand that, that this isn't something happening to you? This is something that you have to work with, but it's not happening to you. It's happening for you. Absolutely. The first thing is be okay with the process. Be okay with where you are. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we're not even happy where we're at to even get to the potential of what's to come. I mean, I, I had to face it last year too. I was like, I can't stand where I live. I can't stand this. I can't mm -hmm. stand that. But in the next breath, God bless me. Give me increase. Do this. And he's like, whoa, fam, you're not even happy with what I gave you. And you want me to give you some more? <laughs> Pump your brakes. Take your sanctified Holy Spirit feel stuff and go sit down somewhere. And I have to go take my Holy Spirit self and go sit down somewhere because I'm not even happy with all the blessings he's given me. But I want more. No. The second thing is find a community that's going to be supportive. Mm -hmm. All of us was meant for a community. None mm -hmm. of us was meant to just be on an island all to ourselves, doing life by ourselves. No. Jesus had 12 disciples. So what makes you think you don't need anybody? They can help guide you through your mess. There's times I'm Voxer and Marco Poli, people like I'm, I'm having a moment. Can can I just can I just cry here on Voxer? Yeah, and yeah. they'll receive it and be like, okay, but they'll talk me through. Right. You need to find the people who are going to talk you through. They're not going to call you stupid or you have no right to feel that way or when are you going to ever get over it? No. What they need to say is, 
Joanne, I see you. Mm -hmm. I love you and I affirm you. We're going to get through this together. Mm -hmm. How more powerful is that than, girl, exactly. get over it. Ain't nothing wrong with you. You, you look fine. What are you complaining about? Ooh, ooh, that person's mind is going to just shut right down. Exactly. But when yeah. you come from a place of love, Joanne, that's the main thing. Absolutely. Come Absolutely. From a place I want it. I'm sorry. I just like this is so, what you said is so important because I feel like we're taught that we need to be independent. We need to do it our own. We need own. We need to be strong. We need to be da 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 da. And we're losing that sense of community. And I really wanted to breathe in this moment for that because we are not here to be alone. We're not here to fight battles by ourselves because like you said, we can get into our own stories and our own like pattern and do the same thing over and over again and think it's going to be different. But it's having what you just said, that that affirmation, that that support. I see you. I, I understand you. But we can do this together. And that gives you that like, you know, a thing of rope that can hold 100 pounds versus that one little part of the rope, the one little strand that's going to split in a minute. That gives the strength to all of us to be able to move forward. So I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I just oh, I no, you're like, great. But I don't move on from this because this is such an important statement. We can't move on from this. <laughs> Absolutely. And then once you have the community, now, Joanne, you need the resources. You need the education because you have to learn yourself what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And I've learned you have to you have to advocate for yourself mm -hmm. when you're dealing with autoimmunity or any chronic illness or injury, because you are the only person that knows what your body's going through. Yeah. You know, something's not feeling right. And if you just got to keep yelling at the mountaintops until someone hears you, that's what you need to do, because only, you know, something's not right. Mm -hmm. Someone's going to have no choice but to listen. Mm -hmm. So definitely educate yourself. Just don't doctor Google it, though, because that'll go you on a tailspin. I mean, you'll end up with 80 different conditions if you keep Googling. Well, what does a chronic cough mean? Well, it can mean this, this, this. And then that causes more anxiousness. So you want to make sure it's the right education mm -hmm. and the right resources. Those are the top three things I feel anyone could really benefit from is, first right. of all, community, that mm -hmm. support, having that education, that knowledge is power, and then the resources to help with that education. Um, Karen, that's a very important statement you made as well, is sometimes we take for granted, right? We go more inward and forget that people really do care and will care because we feel like we're battling it by ourselves. I don't know if you experience that, but I know I have at times where I feel like I'm all alone. Nobody's going to understand what I'm going through. Nobody's going to believe what I'm going through or whatever you, however you label it. And so it is, I think, a part of it, that overwhelm. Um, that you may be feeling, but that we do have people around us that often really will care if they know, if they understand and, and they are listening to what it is that you're going through. Absolutely. I went through that for like about a year and a half where I was mm -hmm. like victim mentality, like everything was right back. You guys don't understand. You don't know what I'm going through. Nobody likes me. I can't stand this. But I wasn't really being clear as to what my needs really were. Mm -hmm. I was always focusing on what I couldn't do, but mm -hmm. not, well, okay, guys, we can do this, but it has to be inside. Mm -hmm. Or I can do this, but I can't stay outside long. I'm mm -hmm. going to have to find a place to rest if I'm outside for 30 minutes. Or, hey, if you're able to, could you be willing to do this? Because by human nature, we have such mm -hmm. an issue dealing with our own problems. <laughs> And when you're general about your own concern, our automatic default is, oh, my gosh, I don't have time for that problem. I don't even want to learn any more about that problem or the specifics. It's another burden. And so that's another stigma we put on ourselves if we're going right. to be burdening people right. by telling our truth. Also, though, I feel like we like it's more than just burdening people. I feel like we think that nobody's really going to care. So why are we even going to voice it? Or we feel embarrassed, so we don't want to invoice to voice whatever it is that we need. But that's also something I think that we learn is not to ask for help, not to tell people how we feel, not to express the pain that we may be feeling because it makes us look weak. Or you know, there's so many stigmas that go with voicing what it is that you're feeling as well. Absolutely. And also for me too, I was always the people everyone came to mm -hmm. for support, yeah. for guidance, for emotional support. So when you're always perceived as the strong one, 
Then mm-hmm. there's that other stigma. Ooh, I can't take this cape off because now they're not going to know what to do because I'm the go-to person. And then if I fall apart, then what's going to happen? But I've learned to say, hey, guys, I understand and it may appear like I'm the strongest person in our circle. But right now, guys, I could really use some strength right now. Mm -hmm. That's more received than you guys don't understand me. You don't do anything. You don't call me. (laughs) You never come around. And the thing is, I got that from my mom Mm -hmm. because she had multiple strokes and everything until she finally Mm -hmm. passed away, unfortunately. But she has such a worldview that the world didn't like you. The world didn't care about you. They would just step over you if you were bleeding on the sidewalk. That, from all of the trauma she's experienced, that was her worldview. And it displayed onto me. She used to always say, I would die and you wouldn't even know it. And then here I come like 10, 20 years later. I would die in my place and you guys wouldn't know because you don't come by. And it's like, er, wait a minute. Where is this coming from? Rolodex in my mind. Oh my gosh, I'll become my mother. (laughs) (laughs) But that, again, that doesn't have to end the story. Even if that's been on repeat, Mm -hmm. we always have the choice to pick up the remote and change another channel in our mind. But we have to be willing. That's the point. We have to be willing and open. I wasn't open to other solutions. I was like, hey, medical field, give me all the medications. Okay, still don't got it. That's cool. I guess that's the way it is. But now I'm like, wait a minute. The real truth with autoimmunity is it's not medical. It's your stress. It's your sleep patterns. It's your nutrition. It's the environment. It's the toxic levels you're exposed to. It's even the chemicals in your food, your detergent, your skincare, even the type of jewelry you wear. All of that stuff can have such a big impact. But that's not talked about in the medical field. No, at all. Not. they don't even believe <laughs> it in the medical field. They don't, they're not educated on it. So they don't Yeah, they're not it. taught it. But that's right. what I've had to learn is I had to look at it from a holistic, whole area perspective mm-hmm. of myself. It's not just the fact that my body doesn't like itself. There's other things that are also triggering that inflammation, which is the autoimmune. So what do I need to try to avoid so I don't have as much inflammation or a flare up, they call, with all my symptoms at once? Mm Because, oh, those are painful. (laughs) They all decide to jump on each other like, tag team, get her. You know, she knows we don't like onions, you know. (laughs) And with that, I can say that what's helpful is have a journal. Mm -hmm. If it's food, start the food journal and start Mm -hmm. journaling it. What is it that you eat? And then if you have a reaction, Start removing one of them and then slowly bring it back in. Yes. That's what I had to learn. I couldn't just eliminate everything at once. Mm-hmm. My body had no idea what I was talking about. It was like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. you want to try that? We'll still be here. But as I started <laughs> just doing slow things, like, okay, with onions, not onions. Oh, yep, it's the onions. Nope, can't do it. That's on the no list. And start building mm-hmm. yourself a list of mm-hmm. things you know. You could go out to the restaurant. Okay, can't have onions, can't have this. Look out, look out for that. It has to be non-GMO. That's what's going to help you feel empowered versus I can't mm-hmm. go out to eat. You now have empowered yourself with the tools with your own case study of yourself of what you right. can and can't do. Because mm-hmm. what we have to remember is that, yes, we're all human, but our chemical composition is different. Mm-hmm. That's why there really shouldn't be a one size fits all approach to any type of solution for us. That's where all the side effects came from. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I think people forget that, that we all are different. We're unique. Even though we're all the same, we all have the same uniform that we wear, per se. But in, internally, we're different. We're emotionally different. We're physically different. We're mentally different. And you can't put it all together. So you need to be able to understand how you think, how you react, how you work. And use your, your, what, because intuitively, did you know what some of the things already that you shouldn't be eating or things that you needed to stay energetically away from or uh, people that you needed maybe really didn't have your best interest at heart? I feel like sometimes we already know that, but we don't trust it or believe it. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of times we're looking for, you know, confirmation in the wrong places. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like we already getting the clues, like you said, and God's yeah. like, how many other ways do I need to show this to you? And then we're sitting here. Well, if you just flip the light switch a couple more times, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> then I'll know it's you. And he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Exactly. Too. But I think a lot of times, Joanne, what it is, is we're in the forest for the trees. We're in the midst of the forest. Right. 
So mm-hmm. we can't see past all the all the spruce leaves and everything because we're in the middle of it. Right. So that's why it's good to have someone on the outside periphery, right. like, "Hey, Joanne, try this," and you're mm-hmm. like, "Oh, I already know that, but why does it sound different?" Sometimes someone else has to give you the same perspective right. to right. turn the switch on to be like, "Oh yeah, confirmation." So many yeah. people are saying it today. Ding. Yeah. yeah. It's very true, and and. I mean, everybody who knows me knows I'm a really big proponent of mind, body, and spirit. If you don't take care of all of them and have them all in balance, then your whole system, your whole life will be out of balance. And I think that we underestimate when it comes to the physical, whether it be what we're eating, what we're thinking, whatever we're taking into our mind. Um, I mean, there's so many different things that, and you know, the one thing that in all of my work, the one thing that is a trigger to people is food. They just will not understand that food really does directly affect your life mentally, emotionally, physically. It really is a powerful thing. And 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 we think we can get away with things, but there's some things you can get away with. But like for you, onions is a big thing. People don't realize onions can be really bad on your body because of the way your body works. Also, I was just talking to somebody the other day about eggs and they're like, no, it can't be eggs. But you don't know what's the trigger to your body when it comes to food that, you know, you could be having really bad joint pains or uh, even like, you know, not being able to sleep or stress. And it could be something you're eating. Simple as something you're eating. Yeah. I I learned that with pizza. Pizza (laughs) constipates me. (laughs) But I didn't know that's what it was. I'm like, oh, this pizza is good. Then three days later, once it starts to digest, I'm like, why did I go? Mm -hmm. So then I started focusing on just that meal. Like, okay, every time I have pizza, like now let's, uh-huh. and I was like, yeah, I can't have pizza unless it's like a cow, like a cauliflower crust, maybe that'll work. But I'm like, yeah, no more pizza. For <laughs> me, for me, the biggest one was ginger ale. <laughs> my, my teacher oh. now has like, get rid of the ginger ale. I'm like, are you, are you serious? Do you know what ginger ale does for me? I have an unset stomach all the time. I can't live without ginger ale. But then I looked at how much sugar was in ginger ale. The percentage is like, mm-hmm. oh my mm-hmm. gosh. I had no idea, but I slowly came off of it. See, we think we have just cold turkey. It that's a shock to your body. It's not going to like you. But if you gradually start decreasing how much you're drinking of it, and then don't buy anymore, that was the key. Mm-hmm. But she had to say it in that way for me to get it. Because I'm thinking, oh, I gotta throw away these three liters already got over in here. Are you serious right now? No. She's like, no, calm down. She's like, just gradually start reducing. Same thing with sugar. I had to start gradually reducing how much sugar I put in my coffee because I used to put eight teaspoons of sugar in my coffee. And people were like, wow, what are you doing? (laughs) Wow. (laughs) But now I don't. Yeah. Now I have two things of water always by me with a lemon Mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. And I don't miss it. But if I do drink a soda, it's like, woo, I can now taste the difference in how sweet it is. Exactly. So it's the small things. Right. It doesn't have to be everything overnight. And I think that's right. where our mind naturally goes. Is, oh, my gosh, everything at once. And it just shuts down on us. No, just one thing. And we've all had that where we've done a drastic diet change and you do it for maybe a week and you're like, oh, and then it starts creeping. You know, the old what you would call old habits start creeping in. It's because you didn't really do it in a way that's long term. And I think what you said is exactly right. It's about eliminating and not eliminating everything. It's about eliminating maybe one or two things and and not really saying, okay, I'm never going to have it again. But what I like to do is say, okay, I can have X, but I have to have A first. So you have A first and then you can have X. And eventually you start realizing that you prefer A over X and you just keep weeding it out more and more until... My diet is completely different than it was 10 years ago. It's just not even, I used to be a big <laughs> diet soda drinker. I would drink like, I don't know, I don't even remember how many, but, and I knew that it was bad for me. And it was really, because I really think that a lot of those things, because of the sugar, it's proven it's addictive. And it really takes a lot of effort to start weeding that out and pulling away from it. But when you do that, you feel so much better. And I will never touch a diet soda or a soda in general at all, ever again. But it wasn't easy. It didn't happen overnight. It took me a long time to be able to get to that point with almost Absolutely. anything. And mine was Gatorade. I oh. had a BJ's membership just oh. to get the case of Gatorade. And I drank one a day. 
like faithfully with ginger ale. So it was like Gatorade, oh. then ginger ale, maybe another Gatorade, back to ginger ale. <laughs> and yeah. it was like, do you know how much sugar is in Gatorade? I was like, but I need the electrolytes. Okay. You see, then you start coming up with these yeah. default responses. Like, but I need da da da. And they're like, you know, you can get it another way. But does it taste the same? <laughs> now I, I don't need- even touch a Gatorade. I'm just like, hey, yeah, I don't need it. <laughs> There's so many healthy ways to get your electrolytes and to, to be hydrated. Gatorade, I, when I see sports teams that are drinking that, I'm like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Look at the look at the color of it. That should tell you alone that Gatorade is not something you should be drinking. <laughs> you should yeah. be drinking something that's yellow and red and blue. <laughs> it doesn't work. I'm sorry. Okay, this is a topic that I can go on for hours and hours because people don't realize the power of food. It, they really do not realize the power of food and how destructive it can be to your body. But it's not, I was just talking to somebody earlier today about, about this subject and I've had, you know, and in, in, there's so many um, diverse separations when it comes to both parties, right? Whether you're eating whatever you want or whether you're a complete health freak. And, and for me, it's about having that balance in the middle because we are human and, and we need to enjoy things. And we also need to make sure that we're being responsible and it's having that balance between the two. So it's not like for me, it's my choice to never have soda because I don't need that sugar. I don't need that in my diet. And what Laura said about having filtered water to me, I can't drink water unless it's filtered, but we're 90% water we need water and people do not drink water just to be hydrated to it helps you with your joints it helps with your weight loss it helps with your mind water is really important to our body and so many people drink gatorade or sodas or teas or whatever coffees you know you just need water yeah i noticed the difference once i started drinking my water how more supple my skin mm-hmm. was in the morning because I used to be like so like dried out like Sahara mm-hmm. Desert dry the next morning mm-hmm. It's because I wasn't hydrated enough. Mm-hmm. But now it's like, OK, where's my water? OK, I need it. OK, thank mm-hmm. you. Is there another water? Oh, I need to have two at all times next to me yeah. because that is more satisfying. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of times if we was more intentional about showing the benefit Mm -hmm. versus what is the negative result of what they are doing be like well think Mm -hmm. about how you would feel Mm -hmm. if you took 21 days without that let's start with 21 days let's see how you're feeling now let's extend it to 90 days Mm -hmm. now it becomes a lifestyle modification versus a a drastic change Mm -hmm. because even our wording will also trigger how our body responds to it just like when you say diet your mind automatically thinks starvation mode and it actually starts yeah. sabotaging you the first time you say it. But if you say, I'm having a lifestyle modification, your brain has no idea what that means. It's like what, lifestyle modification. Okay. What's that? We cool. And it don't bother you as much because it doesn't notice that you're exchanging one thing for the other. Exactly. And there's so many simple and like kind ways to do it. It's not about, saying, you know, like I was thinking as we were talking about food, the other things that we put into our mind can also be a poison, right? We all, we have to be careful about all the things that we're being interactive with in our life, whether it be things that we watch or people that we're hanging out with or choices that we make, or, I mean, there's so many things that can sabotage us where if we have that mindset of having that whole balance, holistic way of, of living, it happens in a gradual way if we have that mindset if we and we make it a full picture versus just one part of our life. That's where the imbalance comes, where if we can take the whole body, the holistic, like you said, that's where we come into being in really homostasis, where we're at peace and at one with the whole being. That's really important. Absolutely. And the thing is, you have to give yourself grace with the process. Mm-hmm. You didn't get to where you are overnight. Yeah. So you can't expect like our microwave society is that it's just going to be overnight and you're going to be great tomorrow. You have to process yourself out of that into the new change. Mm-hmm. So you have to also give yourself grace that it is not an overnight fix. Even the earth was not built in a day. But still, God rested. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's a process. So you exactly. have to give yourself grace. And right. the thing is, we give other people grace faster mm -hmm. than we give it to ourselves. Absolutely. But if you just give yourself grace to trust the process mm -hmm. at the pace and space that's best for you, you will find more contentment because then you're working within it instead of despite it. So I like to say when you're working within it, you're relying on God's strength. When you're working despite it, you're focusing on your own strength. Mm -hmm. These are two different polar ideas and responses that you receive that way. So from your experience, what have been some of the results that you've had when you work on your own strength? I just want to highlight that because it's again, you know, um, let's say, something. Um, <laughs> I make things like worse, like heck in a hand basket, like burn the bridges, everything, everything's a wasteland. And then I want to sit there and be like, oh, how did that happen? And God's just sitting in the corner like, here she go again. Uh, I know, I'll see her right? when she gets back. Only... Yeah. <laughs> and it feels like it's a yeah. struggle to do every right. single thing. Mm -hmm. Because you're mm -hmm. working in your own strength and also right. you're being prideful because you want control of the whole situation. So you already have these backup plans just in case, Jesus, you don't do what you're about to do. Really? <laughs> he has no backup plans. Put all the other blueprints away, burn them and focus on <laughs> the blueprint. That's your life right now. <laughs> right, right. And it's so easy when for I us to do that, you know, take yeah. control or try to do it our way. Exactly. Because we're just built that way. Right. He gave us free will, but we right. also have to know how to manage that it free will. <laughs> when I'm doing it in his strength, ooh, Joanne, I could be going through heck in a handbasket, but I still have peace. When right. I'm doing it in my own strength, I don't have peace. Right. I'm, I'm all, oh my gosh, well, is this going to work? Well, let me try this. And well, let's see how this happens. I'm already trying to negate or already expect mm -hmm. us perceived expectation. That's not realistic to begin with. Mm -hmm. But when I just say, God, I completely surrender it all. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it's going to work. Nevertheless, I trust you. I don't see how it's going to happen right now. Nevertheless, I'm going to trust you. You have never failed me yet. So I know you're not going to fail me now. And then that gives you comfort because mm -hmm. there are so many things that we do day to day that we don't even realize the provision and grace and favor that mm -hmm. God is bestowing upon us every day. Mm -hmm. because we take it for granted because it's like automatic but right. if we was to be automatically handed it to us so easily every single time would we appreciate it the same as when we have to actually put some work and effort into it I, I like to tell people we have to be active participants in our own rescue mm -hmm. no one's gonna drag you kicking and screaming okay <laughs> no one's exactly. Jesus don't do it either he's like are you willing are you open now are, mm -hmm. are you ready no matter how many times I fall on my face, he'll be like, okay, are you ready? Whereas us, we go get the scrolls from 1962 and we roll them all out. And then we remind you from 1962 current, all your mistakes. And you're sitting there like, I can throw dirt at myself. I don't need your help. Thank you. You know, <laughs> but we do that. It was something I was going to go back to because I don't want people to think, oh, you know, darn, look how hard I've been working and I'm, I still do it wrong. And, and that's a part of our process or is learning how to trust and have faith. And faith is not an easy thing from our human standpoint. It's something that, because it's something we can't see. It's something that we can't hold on to. We have to just trust it. And that's something that we as human beings have trouble doing. So it's not like, I, I like what you said. It's a step at a time. We, you take a step forward and you may go back, but you keep going forward with each experience. And, and, you know, I just want people to realize all of us, because we all know it, because we all do it, is we're not going to do it perfect all the time, but it's what you do after. It's like getting back up and getting back on that horse again and realizing that faith is something that we're learning as we go along. Absolutely. And it's okay to fail forward because you won't know what really works for you until mm -hmm. you at least attempt it. So right. I like to say, take messy inspired action, right. see how it works, mm -hmm. then make adjustments later. But we're so afraid of that failure or how we're going to be perceived mm -hmm. or what's people going to say or how we're going to be viewed that that ends up becoming procrastination, which is mm -hmm. technically perfection because we're waiting for that right time, that right season. And then we never launch because right. we're still waiting, but work with what you have. Mm -hmm. Start from there, just work with what you have, then build up from there. 
Right. How did you, how do you feel now and where are you at with your, uh, the autoimmune issues that you've been having and the pain and the, you know, how you're dealing with it? Where are you at with that now? I'm learning to manage them and deal mm -hmm. with the limitations. You know, like I said, I live in a very hot state and with one of the autoimmune, I don't sweat. So I don't have a barometer. Mm -hmm. I'm always hot. <laughs> so there's not really a baseline for me. And with me, I get so hot that I overheat first and mm -hmm. then I finally sweat. But by the time I sweat, it's too late. Mm -hmm. So I just know I can only be outside during certain times of the day. I can only exert so much energy mm -hmm. at certain times of the day. Mm -hmm. While I'm also looking at other things, like I now use more organic natural detergent, mm -hmm. cleaning products, skincare. And I'm noticing that that's helping to reduce the inflammation because there's yeah. not so many different chemicals that my body doesn't even know what it is because it doesn't even like itself, you know? So right. I'm being more patient with myself right? and giving myself that grace and being open to other possibilities. I'm actually going through a certification to become an integrative health practitioner to really mm -hmm. focus on that holistic view of mm -hmm. us. Of We got to look at your stress. You got to look at your sleep patterns. Absolutely. We got to look at the environment. Let's look at all of that and see how we can get all of those dimensions in symmetry with each other. So you can exactly. go from surviving moment by moment to mm -hmm. thriving no matter what. Exactly, and I want people to realize that. People don't know this, but your, your skin is the biggest organ that you have. It absorbs and takes in everything you put on your skin. And if you're not aware of what's in what you're putting on your skin, then you're just feeding your whole system poison. People don't realize that. That's very important to pay attention to what is in everything that you put on your skin. Definitely. Yeah, and just slowly start eliminating things. Yeah. There's nothing, don't have fear and try new things. That was one of my issues. I'm not gonna try that. I've never tried it before. I'm not gonna try that. Mm -hmm. But you don't know what the expectation and the experience is gonna be. So right. I've learned to sometimes change my wording as well, saying, oh, I have to go do that. And they say, and they say I now say, I get to do that. Mm hmm. Sounds better, doesn't it? Really? <laughs> I, have to go to work. I get <laughs> to go to work because how many people do I know that didn't don't have a job because of the pandemic? And I'm upset because I got to get up and go to work. Really? Come on. So <laughs> exactly. I, say, I get to. It right. It's a whole different perspective to you and it makes it more positive. It may not change the situation, mm -hmm. but your view of it is what matters. That's the key point. It really is, because if you have a negative view of something, then everything from that is going to be in the negative. If you have a positive, then you're going to be able to deflect and be able to handle things in a more positive way. It's proven. So it's just what we say or how we think is what we're going to create in our life just by the actions that we're going to take or how we're going to see something or how we're going to feel about something. It's just reality. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. What are some of the biggest tidbits that you would want to leave with people about your experience and what you like to teach people? Well, the first thing is love yourself mm -hmm. because it's going to be hard for you to envision, to be open, to value anything that a solution is presented to you because of your view of yourself. Mm -hmm. So focus on loving you. Find out who are you really to you. And who does God say you are? Mm -hmm. If that means you've got to start journaling, meditation, affirmations, do what is necessary. The word, fill yourself constantly with that. Mm -hmm. Two, don't be afraid to ask for help. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times people don't know we need help because we don't ask. Right. But we're expecting them to read our mind <laughs> to know that we need help. And then we get mad at them. Give them grace too. And don't be ashamed to acknowledge what you're going through. Because right. remember, it's not a label. It mm -hmm. doesn't define you. It's not your whole story. It's just something you're temporarily, temporarily dealing with. Three, find support. Mm -hmm. If it's not with the people around you, seek it elsewhere. Especially with us being online, all the wonderful communities, you know, on Facebook and Circle.so, Clubhouse. There's all these different places where there are people just like you who are going through right there with you. Mm -hmm. Give yourself grace. I cannot say that enough. 
I agree. Rest in the sufficiency for today. Tomorrow's mm-hmm. already happened. Tomorrow's not here yet. Mm-hmm. Focus in the right now. Be fully present because time is our most precious asset. And why waste it being negative, being isolated, feeling discouraged, disheartened, left left to deal with your own devices, cast aside when there are more than enough people in this world who truly will see you for who you are, love you for where you're at, and then love you to the greater. Exactly. But it all starts with you. Mm-hmm. I love that. That is a big exclamation point at the end of all that for sure yeah i think we don't do that enough we don't especially love ourselves enough for sure so i i agree well i want to thank you so much for being with us and for sharing your wisdom and your experience which is very vast and i'm excited that you're doing the whole um medical side of it and understanding nutrition and all of that because that's very i'm very passionate about that And I feel like that really helps more people if we can just get more and more people to wake up to, you know, the holistic way of looking at life, then the better off I think our world will be. Absolutely. And all it takes is one person at a time because you are already influencer if you're impacting one person. Mm -hmm. It's not a thousand. It's not 10,000. It's not a million. It's one person. And when you start with that one, the ripple effect that's caused from that is going to be way beyond your imagination, but you've got to start with that one. I love it. Exclamation point. You have given so many amazing tidbits, so many amazing words of wisdom. And I hope that people will really listen to that because it's really important. And I think that this conversation has been really, really valuable and I really appreciate it. So thank you. Well, thank you so much again, Joanne, for giving me this opportunity to share your platform, share your audience with me so that we can continue to be of inspiration and encouragement and empowerment to other people to really show them the true love and abundance that there truly is out there for all of us. It's not for the elect few. It's for all of us. Exactly. Thank you, everybody. Uh, If you have any questions or comments, please put it in the comment section and I will get back to them. And thank you all for sharing this. And please like, share what, you know, all that stuff. I don't really like or do. But anyway, do it anyway. And uh, I will see you again next time and have a great rest of this week. So take care. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Have a great one, everyone. All right. Bye.